Let's get started. Uh, my name is Anandi. I am, uh, you know, I'm, I work in Amazon, but I've been part of Open Search for about a year and a half. And I think I'm the, our talk, our panel talk is only talk before the beer and the wine. So I think we'll get started right away. Um, so today our topic a panel topic is going to be about powering innovations through open source, open search. Um, so before I get started on the panel and introducing our esteemed panel here, I want to first, uh, uh, you know, reflect on this morning's keynote. Uh, I, I hope some of you or all of you were there in the keynote. Uh, open search is now part of the Open Search Software Foundation. Um, which is part of Linux Foundation, top level project for Linux Foundation. So I'm really, really excited about the news. It's something I've been uh, working, uh, working for for the last, couple, last year. And I've also witnessed Open Search's uh, vibrant growth of the community and its journey for the last many, several years into where we are now. And like as the you know, um, <clears throat> as the keynote speakers were noting, a lot of it is about building trust and building uh, a really active community of contributors in open source. And so, and so for me, this is a huge watershed moment. So thank you, thank you for everyone for being here uh, and part of the panel discussion. So with that, I'm gonna first introduce uh, Shanshan from Uber, Michelle from Canonical, and Peter from uh, SAP. I'm gonna turn over the mics to them and have them introduce themselves. Thanks, Anandi. Um, I'm Shanshan. I run Uber's storage, search, and data organization. Basically, all the stateful services powers on Uber's uh, all kinds of use cases, from delivery to mobility. So I believe everybody uses Uber in this room, right? Raise your hand if you don't use it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Underneath the cover is all my, ser uh, my search team, my storage team, and my data team's infrastructure powers on all kinds of Uber's use cases. So today I'm very excited to be part of this panel and also very happy to see today's, uh, this morning's Open Search Foundation announcement. And thanks, Anandi, for inviting me here. So I realized I used the uh, Uber with Open Search going going to this convention this morning. Well, I'm Michelle. I'm part of Canonical. It's the publisher of Ubuntu. I've been involved a lot with the Open Search project uh, that we have at Canonical, and it's a critical part of our data and AI solutions or portfolio. Peter. Yeah, my name is Peter Giese. I'm head of the SAP Open Source Program Office. Um, which we just call OSPO, as everybody else. And the OSPO's task is to define SAP's open source strategy and policy to enable all our development teams to consume open source and contribute to it in a secure, compliant, and frictionless manner. And we also promote inner source within SAP for those projects which we are not publishing as open source. And yeah, thanks for having me. We are also a founding member of this new foundation. We have been working on it with smaller contributions from day one, with some blog posts and presentations, and now I hope we can bring it to the next level together. So, you guys are gonna witness how we're gonna pass this uh, mic around all day long today, but it will try to get efficient. But the one thing I'll say is uh, thank you, Shan Shan. Uh, Michelle and Peter, they're all founding members of the Open Search Software Foundation. So thank you, thank you for all of the work you guys have done so far and continuing to do. So the, the, a lot of the panel's discussion today is we're gonna focus on open source innovations, why it matters to each of these businesses and businesses in general, and how open source, open search have contributions have been critical for each of their businesses as well. So that's where the focus is gonna be. And I'm actually gonna be moderating. I got the easiest job. I just have to ask them questions and they're gonna answer. So, so we'll get started. Okay. All right. Okay. 
So I'm going to give this all the way to Peter. You know, we didn't do this right. We should have had you. <laughs> it's OK. Um, it's fine. We'll figure this one out. I, maybe I can ask Shanshan, and then we'll go to Peter. We could do that, too. Um, OK, so Shanshan, what appealed to you about Open Search? Why did your organization get involved with Open Search? Yeah. All right, a very good question. Um, is mainly four things. So one is, as everybody knows, right, as I introduced myself, my team is responsible for the infrastructure part. We also have the product team. They build applications on top of the infrastructure, on top of the platform. So one thing which is open search offers a very easy um, to deploy user experience, which is very important to my internal customers at Uber. Easy to deploy, easy to use, easy to monitor, and this kind of easy onboarding experience is extremely critical to Uber's developers. Second reason is uh, feature rich. Um, at this moment, Uber hasn't internally built a search engine, and because we have a very limited amount of engineers, we couldn't catch up the speed in terms of building new features. To give all of you an example, um, our product team's engineers, they want a feature, a very basic feature called range query. Now, many of you probably know Open Search offers that, right? But it will take our engineers multiple quarters to build such a feature. If a feature is already available in the community, it's our big incentive to just use it by itself. Third reason is uh, community. So having a community, being able to collaborate with the community is extremely critical for our infra team or platform team's success. As announced in this morning's main stage, we have SAP, Chronicle, Uber, and we also have a lot of other companies behind the scenes. So we really want to be joining the force with the community. Last but not least is, as everybody knows, open search originally forked from elastic search. Behind the scenes, we also have Lucene. So it has a very good community. And this community already accumulated 20 plus years of the knowledge and experience. Uh, to me, open search is a platform we can trust. In this morning's keynote, all of you probably heard a lot of talk about trust, right? So yes, I trust uh, open search, and I believe this is going to be good for the future. Thank you, Shanshan. So I, I think trust is the important, and, and it's a really especially for mature open source projects, you know, it really builds on trust. And the other thing, you know, Shanchan mentioned is about Lucene, and there's an active open source community around Lucene, and so having open search in Lucene, built on Lucene engine is a very powerful uh, story, and I really appreciate everything uh, uh, Uber and the team has done in terms of contribution. We have uh, Yuping in the audience who actually they've done a lot of work around performance, gRPC, and protobuf, and more, so thank you. Uh, so now I'll, I'll turn it over to Michelle. Uh, what do you feel your organization gets back by contributing to open source? So what do I feel um, about my um, organization gets back by contributing to open source? I am from Canonical, the publisher of Ubuntu. And we love open source. Uh, we are, in fact, celebrating our 20 years anniversary of this Linux operating system. So um, raise your hand if you don't know Ubuntu. <laughs> I'm, I'm copying you. <laughs> well, uh, so I think um, that's one thing that we do in Ubuntu, like really loving open source, really loving contributions. And on top of Ubuntu is making sure that we run applications seamlessly in that Linux environment. So what do we get back by you know, contributing to open source? I think Ubuntu will not be Ubuntu today without the open source community. It continuously innovative uh, into its uh, current feature sets and continuously thrive as an operating system because of the community that actually contributes. Tell us um, what is the best feature that we can have. And um, yeah, and collaborate with the community, with uh, hardware vendors, with, with cloud providers, and many more. And, um, and that's the reason why we continuously evolve as, as an organization and the project itself. 
On top of that, uh, through contribution of open source, we strongly have this data and AI portfolio that we are working on and making sure that, you know, Open search, for example, can run on any Linux environment through a couple of our projects or operator that makes it easy for open search to be deployed on any cloud. And uh, in that way, we Canonical also learn a lot. Like, you know, wow, it's actually quite the big work to make sure that uh, applications such as open search, which is very, very strong and uh, used by multiple organizations, um, it, it does require a lot of work <laughs> to make it available through the users. So we really learn a lot through contribution to open source and creating open source projects. Thank you, Michelle. That was very insightful. OK, we'll go to Peter. Um, Peter, uh, how does your organization engage in open source projects? And especially, can you help us name some of the projects you are actively involved in? Yeah, some of you in the audience might maybe not even know that SAP is an open source player. So let me just uh, share a fact with you according to the EPAM Open Source Contributor Index. SAP is one, is ranked in the top 10 of commercial contributors to open source on public GitHub. Um, so we have a long history. We started in 1998 to port our ERP R3 system to Linux, and that helped also paving the way for Linux in the enterprise. Um, but now to your question. Um, how does SAP or how do SAP developers contribute? I see mainly four different types of contributions. We encourage all our developers to contribute bug fixes and features upstream to the open source projects that we are using. And um, one of the first things we did in the OSPO was we removed the approval process for that so developers can do this without any approval. And the idea is that we want to foster a co-innovation culture that way, together with the open source community. Second way to contribute is that sometimes we are having entire teams co-developing open source projects together with others. One example would be OpenJDK, where SAP is a major contributor. We even have our own OpenJDK distribution called Submachine. And for that, we provide long-term maintenance for enterprise customers, so much longer than open source projects normally pro uh, could do with the, with the community. Um, the third way is that we also share complete projects from SAP as open source with the community and invite others to co-innovate with us and um, to co-develop. One example would be Gardner, which is our Kubernetes cluster as a service solution, which works multi-provider, multi-region. Um, and yeah, you can do fleet management with that. So SAP is using it for managing more than 10,000 Kubernetes clusters in production. Um, or another example would be OpenUI 5, which we started, I think, more than 10 or 15 years ago. It's an HTML5 JavaScript front-end reactive framework, um, which provides enterprise-grade um, features, for instance, we, we deliver it with a complete feature set of enterprise-ready controls, UI controls, and we even have our own open source conference for OpenUI 5 once a year. Um, and then the next level is that for mission-critical technologies that we are using in our own SAP business technology platform, um, we also create foundations with industry partners. Um, one example is we are a founding member of the Eclipse Foundation. That was already in 2004. We are a founding member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And today, of course, we are more than happy to be one of the founding members of the Open Search Foundation. Yeah. So one thing I want to highlight what Peter said is the culture uh, and how the organizations, if you invest in the right culture and invest in the people who work in your organizations to contribute to open source, that's when innovations happen and the right you know, flywheel uh, happens for the businesses. So thank you for that insight, Peter. Um, okay, so Shanshan, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you see as priorities for open source? open search in the roadmap ahead. Sounds good. So for Uber's use case, we all understand it has a very large scale. 
right? Because Uber's business model is just we have to build on uh, top of the volumes because that's how the re revenue is being generated. So to me, it's very important as a priority to be able to support the performance and skill needed by Uber. Uh, concretely, today we know open source architecture, we have the serving and the ingestion being handled together. My team is working with another team and try to separate the serving and the ingestion to have a uh, serverless architecture. So to me, this one is important. I believe once we have this, it's going to benefit a lot of the companies have such kind of large scale requirement. And second, as Anandi mentioned, we are working on this uh, gRPC support. Well, at Uber, the entire data platform, gRPC communication is the standard. Some of them probably um, still use the HTTP and also uh, REST-based protocol. Uh, based on our internal benchmark testing, gRPC can offer 30% more better performance. Um, raise your hand if you feel gRPC can, gonna, can, can benefit um, your use case as well. I want to see how people uh, really view this feature. Some people there, okay. Some people raise their hand, right? So if you you are interested in uh, knowing this, and um, yeah, we can talk about this together and try to see how we can accelerate it and make this happen. Yeah. I think gRPC is the way to go, so I'm all in. <laughs> and actually, there is a, a blog post which was published last week, I think. It was uh, written by a few people in the audience, uh, Pallavi and a few others, uh, in collaboration with the, the Uber team and the Slack team, uh, and all of these are actually uh, contributors into Open Search Project. So I'm actually, thank, thank, thank you, um, thank you, Shanshan, for highlighting performance and some of the key architectural changes we, we want to do in the roadmap ahead. So thank you for that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle. So what do you think open source projects can learn from Open Search? That's a hard one, so I'm going to ask you that. <laughs> um, it's really a hard question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I think it's a very vibrant community. We have witnessed open search from its inception. I've met amazing community members that we have collaborated with. And I can take it up in uh, three different angles. First is the people, which is about the community. I think the, the people at the Open Search Org and the future or now, which is the Open, Open Search Software Foundation, are very, very friendly, kind, and always very receptive to new features. What are the, the requests from partners like yeah. Uber? You know, I think um, it's, it's, a, it's a community I really like working with from, you know, joint go-to-market by amplifying the message of open search. And, um, yeah, I think the, the, the people are really, really amazing. And then the second one is the process. It's, it's quite straightforward and easy and well-documented way of uh, contributing to the open search uh, project. There are so many contributors right now from different organizations, and it will not happen if the process are not in place. And I think uh, every open source project can learn from open search by doing that. So, And then lastly, of course, the technology. I think it's a very innovative project from, you know, uh, a lot of people knowing it as a search engine and analytics suite and like really a top uh, choice for a lot of developers and data analysts. We have also like seen uh, really good improvements and into the AI ML space, like you know all the extensions that was done on top, people building uh, and using a lot of plugins for retrieval augmented generation and a lot more. And uh, I, I'm just very excited to see what's more for for open search because yeah, the the people, the process, the technology. It's, it's really something that every open source project, especially the ones that will kickstart, can learn from open search. Thank you. I, I think I'm going to put that in my people, process, and technology. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, well said. Um, I, I think it was a hard question, and I think you answered it really well, so thank you. Um, Shanchan, uh, I think I'm going to actually ask Peter, sorry. 
Um, now that Open Search has trans transitioned to a vendor neutral foundation, Open Search Software Foundation, what does it mean for SAP? And does anything change moving forward? Yeah, first of all, I think um, transitioning in a neutrally governed foundation is a big step for, step for the whole community, right? It's a signal that contributions from a diverse group of people and companies are valued. It's also a sign that there's some sustainable long-term security in this project, and I think it also gives some kind of investment protection to companies that if they contribute, um, there's a long-term benefit out of that, um, which is extremely important, I think, for our companies and for SAP, of course, as well. Um, we have now with uh, our colleague Verena Lomach, um, a colleague in the governance board, and I think the governance board, with the funding that the foundation has, will probably work um, or do a good job on further increasing and growing the community, which is important, organizing community events. Maybe we do more on the community uh, side of community uh, installer, community builds, community uh, quality assurance. And we also have this, a colleague from SAP on the technical steering committee. So there we want to actively engage in the roadmaps and, for instance, features or areas that are important to SAP are um, the integration or optimization for open telemetry because we use open search mainly for our observability service in our business technology platform or also enterprise um, qualities like FIPS compliance that is an area where we want to actively or are already actively contributing to bring that also to an even higher level than we already have it today. Love it. Thank you. And with all of your experiences in like, you know, uh, working with open source projects, I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to have you as a, a founding member for Open Search uh, Software Foundation. So thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask this question to Shan Shan. So what do you think are the key investments for Open Search to drive innovation? Okay, so um, at Uber, besides the traditional text search, we are also looking into vector search and a semantic search. So this is uh, the lot of AI use case. So to me, I feel it's very important for open search community to invest into GPU support. And as all of you probably heard a lot of um, GPU investment already. And I can share some concrete example. Because of the large scale Uber needs to support, today when we try to ingest the data into the search platform, right? in order to search, we need to have this data ingestion as a very first step. Sometimes it could take from 10 to 20 hours to inject uh, some data set. And uh, um, the failure rate while we are ingesting the data could be high as well, as high as 10%. Uh, That's the latest uh, data from our real production environment. So imagine a developer after waiting for 10 hours and just to see a failure, how disappointing that could be, right? GPO is going to solve this problem. Um, one data point I gathered from a recent experiment is in order to inject the similar amount of data, it will take um, at most half an hour, right? So now you can see this significant improvement. In this case, the developer needs to inject the data half an hour, or maybe even there is a failure can be detected within half an hour. And this can dramatically improve the, our developer's productivity. So to me, yeah, GPU vector search is definitely an area I feel we need to invest into uh, all together as one community. Second thing may be a little bit of unique to Uber, which is today if we look at open search, um, we can handle those kind of near real-time use case, right? Lucene NRT, for example, near real-time uh, is a Lucene library, and we are also leveraging on it. Regardless it's open search or our internal search engine, we use this um, near real-time solution. But for Uber, we do have a very unique use case, which we need to handle real-time 
use case anymore, right? So because all of you use Uber, uh, Uber, you know the moment you go to the app and you want to call a car and you want a real time, you don't want the car actually coming or the data is from five minutes and even one minute ago. You want the car is actually approaching you within a few seconds, right? That's a real time information. So today, I don't think we are able to tackle that problem by using open search technology yet. But I think going forward, that might be an area we can look into. May not be short term, may be strategically important for long term. You know, I actually think. Uh I use Uber now. This whole week I've been using Uber, and this morning <laughs> I, I was thinking this with all this rain and the storm, was like, you know, if I didn't have the Uber, there's no way I would have gotten here on time. So uh, I, I do agree on the real time search scenarios. <laughs> so, so thank you. Uh, these are key investment areas, and I am really happy that, you know, we as a community, we're al already investing in the vectors. We're also investing in search and search performance, and some of the work you just talked about, uh, separation of the ingestion and the serving layers. So I think there's a lot of the work is in the RFCs, uh, and, but uh, we as a community need to continue to contribute and innovate. So thank you, Shanshan. So, um, the last potential question for the day is Michelle. Um, so what do you think are the key char characteristics for an open search project which signals that we have to, well, actually, I'm going to change that question, sorry. I decided not to answer, ask that question, so sorry. Uh, how do you see the open search community thriving under the Linux Foundation umbrella? Actually, after the announcement uh, this morning, I got super excited yeah. uh, with the fact that Linux Foundation will be steering the, the, the open search project. Um, because I, I was kind of like looking back, the Open Search Con 2023, where the first day is all about uh, gathering the community members and asking them, how can we improve the community? What are the features you wanted to have? What is the process so that you can easily contribute or you know, file a bug and we can provide you a patch? And one of the items that was highlighted in that is like, you know, what if Open Search becomes a foundation? And to think about that, that was just a year ago. It was an idea that was sparked there. I don't know if the idea has been lingering around for long. But then, you know, 12 months after we are here with Linux Foundation supporting the, the project, it's really amazing when, when things like this it just goes so fast, incredibly so fast with, I don't know, 12 members um, onboarding to the, the organization. And as at Canonical, we, we love Linux, of course, we <laughs> are a Linux OS um, organization. But at the same time, I think the Linux Foundation is really a good representative uh, of a neutral and trusted hub for, for collaboration, for thriving open source projects. And we have seen that with many CNCF projects, with, with Valky very recently, which is also so thriving, Open Tofu, and many, many more. So I cannot wait and see uh, how Open Search will thrive more with all the roadmaps <laughs> that you have shared and uh, request with all the a lot of go-to-market strategy that we will do together, and at the same time, just to improve also the process and you know become. Um, uh, more, more and more collaborative as we go through. And I know that there is a lot of um, plans in, in terms of technical steering committee, formations, and governing boards, something that we are really looking forward to see happening. Thank you. So I think uh, it's well said, uh, Michelle, and I think thriving is, you know, we've, we've been thriving and we'll continue to thrive. And I think today is just the beginning of a, another new journey we're going to have as we continue to grow and thrive. So thank you for that. Um, any closing statements from Peter or Shanshan? You did, Peter? <laughs> you get nominated. <laughs> yeah. As, as I said as well, so open search also for SAP is a very important part of our business technology platform. We use it to collect metrics and traces and logs, and we build our observability service on top of that that is used by developers, application developers, but also by our uh, platform administrators. And of course, we need it to be performant. 
we needed to scale with our needs, we needed to be enterprise grade, and that is already achieved to the largest degree, and now together we can even bring it to the next level, um, from my point of view. And just to give you one data point, in our BTP we are already running more than 8,000 open search clusters in production, so that is not a small part, I would say, yeah. And yeah, I would leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, way to end it. You. Anything you want to say? Final statement? Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, again, I'm very excited to be part of the journey. And at Uber, we are committed to open source, not only just open search, because the entire data storage platform is all building on top of the open source technologies. We have Kafka, Flink, Pinot, Cassandra, Redis, et cetera, right? all kinds of technologies. We really want to invest into the community, leverage the community, and also contribute back to the community to make this a real thriving journey for all of us. So I'll end this uh, discussion. So like I said, I had the most easiest job. So thank you again, Peter, uh, Michelle, and Chan Chan. So, you know, we build together, so I'll end open search as, you know, that we're all in it to build together. So thank you.